Now, as I was writing the book on Hilda, I realized there's a lot more to this broad than I ever thought. Like, I thought there was one Hilda, one version, one way, but in my inexhaustible obsession with Hilda and understanding her inside and out, I came to find that there are four different iterations of Hilda, if you will. I call them the four BS beliefs of Hilda. Now, let me back this up. A belief is just a thought you have over and over and over again that you buy into, right? And when you have a thought, a thought makes you feel a certain way. And when you have a feeling, you act based on that feeling. Thoughts, feelings, actions. Not terribly hard. If Hilda puts a thought in your head and you buy into that BS, then that thought makes you feel like crap. Who do you think you are? Oh, I feel disempowered, stressed, freaked out, scared. Afraid of the edge of that stage right there. And so now how do I behave? Well, I sabotage myself. But there's a lot of different nuance to this woman. And I would love to see, as I go through this, who relates to this one? It's going to have to be a little vulnerable. And as a coach, I'm known to make people cry. Right? Yeah, see, there you go. No, I'm not going to make you cry today, I hope. Um, but let me tell you a little bit about the four different Hildas. So first up, BS belief number one is this woman here. I can't Hilda. Now, I can't Hilda is like a playground bully. She attacks you from the inside out. She attacks your confidence. She wants to make sure you doubt yourself and your abilities at every turn. She's the one who tells you that you're a special little snowflake, that there's something just wrong about you. It's kind of mean. And there's no possible way you can do this. Any, anybody hear of imposter syndrome? That's her. Who do you think you are? Who said you were qualified for that? You should go out and get more qualifications before you tell everybody that's what you do. I can't believe you're passing out that business card. That's, I can't, Hilda. She's mean, she's cruel, and she attacks your self-worth. And if you listen to her long enough, you take a really long time to decide you can handle something new. In entrepreneurship, she will hold you back forever from launching. She'll keep you in your day job or the job job that pays the bills, that financial oxygen, which is really important. She'll keep you there for a very long time because you'll doubt that you can make it. Now, she has an evil stepsister. I shouldn't, Hilda. So I can't, right? She's attacking you from the inside out. I shouldn't, Hilda, uh, comes from the outside in. I shouldn't, Hilda, is the one, I like to think of her as kind of like your big sister as you're entering high school, but she's already there. And she's nagging at you to not embarrass me. That's her. She's obsessed with how the world sees her. She's always thinking that she's walking around with a spotlight and everybody's watching her every move. And at any moment, she's going to embarrass everybody. The fear of embarrassment is a big one here. I shouldn't, Hilda, also gets you obsessed with comparing yourself to others. Anybody do that? Compare themselves to others, right? And you're worried and obsessed and, and terrified that you're not measuring up to what somebody else is doing. This is when you can't price your services to save your life because you need to see how everybody else is pricing themselves, right? I shouldn't, Hilda, she's very, very mean, and she will wag her little finger at you like a crazy person to remind you to behave yourself. Make sure that you're doing it the right way, whatever the F that means, right? She's worried, she's terrified that any moment you're going to mess up. And if you can't do it the right way, forget about it. Oh, and don't start with me about being nice, being have. I shouldn't, Hilda wants you to be nice. She wants everybody at Entrepreneur Summit to love you. So you need to make sure that you don't make any enemies and that everybody's happy. Anybody resonating with I can't or I shouldn't, Hilda, yet? Yeah? We've heard these broads? Yeah? All right. I thought that was it. So I was working on the book, and I was like, okay, so there's the, the inner and the outer. We're done, right? There's two more. This one, this one hurts. This is I don't know Hilda. I don't know Hilda is terrified of the starting line. 
anything that she's going to start, she's going to second guess and second guess and second guess. I'm about to start a new program, but first I'm going to buy a course on Facebook ads. Yes. That's what I need before, because but I can't build this course until I know how I'm going to sell it. And you know what? I think I need to go back to school. This is hard. I don't know what I'm doing. There's no way I can do this. She's a panicked coworker, like always on deadline, never meeting deadlines. And as soon as she draws a starting line in front of her, she finds her way to get out of it. She gets hooked on what I call info crack. Anybody got an info crack habit, right? Information product overload. How many of you right now, I'll raise my hand already, have a dusty cyber file on your computer full of programs that one day you really, really feel like you're going to finish soon, yeah? All those programs, all those books on the bookshelf, all those audio books, all of those podcasts, all of that information gathering, because at least I'm productive, I'm researching. Feels good if I'm researching, I'm doing something. At the end of the day, I didn't accomplish much. I didn't implement anything. That's, I don't know, Hilda. She wants so desperately for you to say the phrase, I don't know, which by the way is a, a bad word in my coaching practice. Anybody remember, um, what was it? You can't do this on television? No? There was this horrible television show on Nickelodeon where if you said, I don't know, slime poured on your head. I'd like to bring that back. I think that would be a good thing for our humanity. Because when we say, I don't know, what we're actually saying, I quit. I'm going to say that again. When you say, I don't know, what you're actually saying in this moment, I quit. This is too hard. I can't make a decision. And you have the right to change your mind in five seconds. There's information in that first answer. But if I don't know Hilda is a habit, and you have a habit of listening to her, you're second-guessing yourself to death. All right, that's three so far. Who hears from I don't know Hilda? Yeah? What about that I shouldn't woman that's got you comparing yourself to others? Some I shouldn'ts? Any I can't, that self-doubt part? All right, let's see if we see this one. Now, honestly, mm, I didn't see her coming. I thought Hilda was mean, but Hilda can be nice. I was very surprised by this. I don't want a Hilda. It's kind of like that, that girl that's desperate to be your best friend in the whole wide world, and so she enables you at every corner, right? She's like buddies up to you and says, you tried, let's watch Netflix. <laughs> you got up this morning, that's a win. That's good. She convinces you that you don't actually want to, right? I say, I don't want to, because it's that casual. You don't feel like it. You're not inspired, therefore you don't have to write a blog post. You have to wait until motivation shows up, which I don't know about you. Has motivation knocked on anybody's freaking door lately? It hasn't popped by mine. But she's waiting for motivation and inspiration to like show up like, I don't know, uninvited visitors. And then I'm able to do the thing I want to do. I don't want to Hilda attacks the finish line. She'll start stuff all day long with zero intention of actually following through. She's the one that makes sure you never completely implement what you said you were going to do. I don't want to Hilda works against I don't know Hilda. And she is tricky because then, as coaches, we say it's self-care. How do you know when it's self-care versus I don't want to Hilda. It takes a little practice to kind of know. Here's how you know. Did you get something done before you went and indulged in some self-care? And self-care matters. I'm a coach. I have to say that. They'll take away my toaster oven. But we want to make sure that I don't want to Hilda isn't taken over. Anybody here from I don't want to Hilda from time to time? I don't feel like it. You got to be crazy. What are you thinking? So there it is, the Hilda Vogue. That's what I call it. And Hilda is on a mission to make sure your businesses stay small, to make sure you don't level up, to make sure you stay really tight and cozy in that fabulous little comfort zone of yours. Because again, 
if you never do something bold and brave and big and badass, other things that start with the letter B, you will never fail, but you'll never succeed either.